that we would have extra credit, right? We talked about it before we left for break. Now, I, I'll be honest, completely forgot to put it on Schoology. You guys knew about it, but I didn't put anywhere on Schoology for you to actually turn it in. I know some of you emailed it to me, but if you haven't been able to email it, because again, I was all, that was on me, um, I didn't post an assignment on Schoology. It is up now, and I extended it to the end of the week, so till Friday. So if you didn't do it, then you still have time to do it. Remember, it was an interview with a family member. Yes, I walked you through the app. Um, so it's all on there now. Again, I did receive some of you guys' uh, interviews through email, but it's up there as well, and now you have an extra week to get it done if you, wanna, if you want the extra credit, okay? Yes? Let's see here. Um, Peter, what's one thing you notice about the sentence, Peter? The semicolon. The semicolon. All right, so we have a sentence before the semicolon. My friend always dresses similarly to her boyfriend. Semicolon. And then the mere sight makes me want to vomit. What else did we notice about the sentence? Let's see here. Robbie. 
Julia, what's one thing you answered, Julia? Which one did you answer? You still working on it? Okay. Who can tell me how texts are organized? Did anybody get that one? I bet you guys know it. There's like five different ones. Cause and effects. Problem solution. Cause and effect, problem solution. Do you guys remember the organizational patterns of text? Cause and effect is one, problem and solution is another. Do you guys remember any others? I know you've gone over them. You might just be having a hard time retrieving them from your from your brain. No? Massimo, what did you which one did you answer? Um, number six. Number six, what kind of stories or topics are covered in informational text? Okay, what you put Massimo? Um usually stuff that be on the news or stuff you didn't know about before, stuff that happened outside of America. Yeah, stuff on the news, uh, things that you may not be aware of. Basically, anything that gives you information, right? Um, Rodolfo, which one did you answer? You haven't? Aiden, which one did you answer? Uh, what is the purpose of informational text and I put two points? Perfect. What is the perfect purpose of informational text to inform, to tell you about something? Good job. And we'll learn more about all those questions. It was just trying to see what you guys remember. You guys have, I know for sure you've gone over this seventh and eighth grade um, because it's a major genre that is that is covered in those in middle school, but we'll go over these things. All right, so today we're gonna be looking at infographics. So we're gonna break down the word infographic. Info is information. Graph is a drawing or a picture, something that's visual. Um, and ic, the IC, is related to. So that means that you have information related to a subject in a visual format. So they give you something to look at visually to be able to retrieve information. So it's not just a piece of paper with a bunch of writing on it. So there are many different types of infographics and they're all organized in different ways. Now, I, I said two of them already, but we're gonna write these down in our notebook. We've got description or listing. So you might wanna title it text structures or text organization patterns because you will need them. Text structures or text organization patterns. Um, you've got description or listing. 
you've got sequence and chronological order. So things that give you like a first, second, third, or a timeline, that's a chronological order, a timeline of events. You've got compare and contrast, what is alike and what is different. Cause and effect, when something makes something else happen. And then problem solution. They talk about a problem, but they also offer a solution. So infographics and informational text are typically organized in one of these ways. Write them down so you don't forget. Infographics and informational text are typically organized in one of these five ways. So when we talk about text structures or text organization, you know we're referring to these five different ways. Yes? We won't forget now, right? So we'll for John Rogers straight away, please. Solution. 
solution. So problem obesity, and then what should you do down here is the solution, right? They're talking about a problem, but here's some things that we can do to fix this, yes? All right, so we are going to practice with this, these little boxes on the left side, because in a second, you're going to do the same thing, but on your own. So if you notice on the box at the very top, it says, how is the information presented and organized? Check all that apply. Now, I just said that they overlap sometimes. So in this case, we know for sure what was one of the organizational structures. Cause and effect, right? But it's also giving us information. It's describing what is global warming, right? So what would be another one that we would have, we would check off on that top box? Descriptive. So we have cause and effect and we have descriptive. I don't think we have anything else, right? We don't have compare and contrast. Um, it's not offering any solutions. And then it's not listing or chronological order. All right, and then we would go to the second box and it says, why do you think the information is organized this way? So why is it organized with cause and effect and descriptive uh, organizational patterns? You would write down one complete sentence. I think the infographic is organized this way because blank. What is said? So you're going to summarize the information presented in the infographic. So. Once you review the infographic, you tell me what is the infographic telling us? Yes? Okay. Then we have additional boxes. What is the purpose of the visual element? So if you notice, you've got a circle here. Now, this one doesn't show it, but when you get infographics later, you'll see the pictures will have a number attached to it. Okay? So like, for example, this one might have a 1, a 2, and then this one might be a 3. Yes? You'll see the numbers attached to it. You're going to choose one of the pictures, and you're going to circle it. So if you choose to do this one, and this one has the number one attached to it, you would circle one. And then you would tell me what is the purpose of this picture. Why did they add that picture? Yes? So that's where those numbers are coming from. You don't see it here, but on the copies of the infographics I'm going to give you in a minute, you will see numbers on your infographics. That's what that is. Does that make sense? Then you're going to tell me who do you think is the intended audience. So who would care about this infographic? When they made this infographic, who was it made for? Who would care about global warming, uh, the causes and the effects? And then why do you think this infographic was created? What is the purpose of this infographic? What, is, what, is the, what are the people who made this trying to do? What is their intention here? What do we think it is? If they're get, giving us the causes and the effects, they, what do they want to help stop it? help stop it, right? Like their purpose is probably so that we're aware and hopefully do something to help stop it, yes? So you would try to figure out why is it created? What is the purpose? All right, so let me go ahead and pass out the handouts. Now, this is also, actually no, I haven't posted it on Schoology yet, so I'll just give you a paper copy.
the graphics. Let me go over part one of the handout. Part one. It says directions, review the three infographics, choose two to analyze by answering the questions below. So you're going to go through the three infographics that I gave you, and you're going to choose two of them to fill out the front page of this handout, or the first page, yes? The boxes are the exact same boxes that we did with the other one that we saw on the board. So these boxes are the exact same that are on your handout, yes? You're using two infographics to fill out both sets of boxes. Now, make sure that when you start filling your boxes out that you give me the title of, it, of each infographic you're using so that way I know which one you're using, right? When I'm grading, I know which one you're referring to. Also, on your copy of the infographics, the numbers, remember I told you there were numbers attached to pictures? They're very light, some of them. So if you look at the Kobe Bryant one, there's one right in the middle, right? We see number one, and it's, it, it's uh, referring to the image of Kobe Bryant and Michael Jordan, right? Two is on the bottom left. It's very light. It's a little hard to see. Um, and then three is on the bottom right. Do we all see them? So when you're looking for those numbers that are attached to the pictures, just know that they might be very light and it might be hard to see. The infographic with gender and age, number one is up here where this lady's like climbing a ladder. Number two is on the bottom right and number three is at the bottom in the middle of the page. At the, bo the bottom in the center. Yes? So again, just make sure you, you look for those because they are light, they kind of blend in. Not so much online. Online, uh, if you end up using Schoology, they are like a bright red, so you'll be able to see them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you 20 minutes to do the first part. So 20 minutes to go through the three infographics, choose two, and fill out those boxes, yes? And then we're going to move on to part two, which I'll explain in a minute, or once we're done with this first part, yes? All right, guys, let me go over the next two parts of your handout so that way you can get started. So part two of your handout says to write in a paragraph, you're answering the question that says, which graphic or visual element is the most effective? Um, so if you see... In your infographic, you know how we had the visual elements numbered, right? Pictures had a number, one, two, or three. If in the Kobe Bryant uh, infographic, you say, you know what? Visual number two was the most effective. It, it really gave me a lot of information or it helped me understand what they were talking about. Then you can write about that. So you'll write a paragraph and you'll tell me the graphic element that I found most effective is blank. So tell me, is the is, is graphic number three in the Kobe Bryant infographic or graphic number two in the age infographic? Provide a description of your visual element and what its purpose is. So this graphic um, showed, you know, an individual whatever or um, illustrated the effects of global warming. And then explain your thought process behind why your proof supports why your graphic is the most effective. So the evidence helps to explain why, insert the graphic you chose, is the most effective uh, and then because blank. So graphic number two that I wrote about is the most effective because of this. This is why I think it's the most effective. Does that make sense? So you're answering this question using eight and I have Send us steps for you guys. I'm going to leave these set, but before you get started on the second part, let me just go ahead and explain part three so that way you can just move on. Part three. You are creating your 
your own infographic. Okay? So if you go to the back of your paper and look at the bottom, do we see all those three boxes with a whole bunch of bullet points? Yes? So we've given you statistics on TikTok, statistics about Twitter, and statistics about social media in general. You're going to create an infographic based on one of these sets of statistics. Yes? So whichever one you choose, you don't have to do all three, whichever one you choose is up to you. I'm going to give you a blank sheet of paper and you're going to create an infographic just like the Kobe Bryant one, just like the H, uh, H1 that I gave you, uh, global warming that you saw. So an infographic has to have what aside from information? Visuals. Visuals, right? So you're going to have to get creative, yes? So on the paper it says create your own infographic based on the TikTok, Twitter, or social media statistics provided below. Choose one of the organizational structures we've covered for your infographic. So yes, you're given the information. It doesn't have to be descriptive. We know it's going to have information. We know it's going to describe the statistics of, of one of the social medias that we give you. Uh, but it doesn't have to just be that. You could choose cause and effect, compare and contrast, uh, problem solution, or chronological. You'll have to get a little more creative. But you could choose that. Yes? And then things to consider, so the format, how are you going to format your infographic, who is your audience, your purpose, why are you making this infographic, um, the ease of understanding, so how easy is it to understand your infographic, um, what word choice are you going to use, are you going to use a list, are you going to uh, include all the statistics, what pictures are you going to use, so all of that is for you to consider for your infographic, does that make sense? Any questions? If you want, online, what, I'm gonna post the assignment online on Schoology. There is an option for you to use a, for a website called Canva to create your infographic. Our Zoom students will be using Canva. Um, that's an option for them. So that's an option for you guys too. If you wanna use Canva and do the infographic electronically, you can, but you'll have to go on there and watch the tutorial that I attached on how to use Canva. Yes? Does that make sense? All right. So go ahead and get started on part two. I'm going to pass out blank paper so that if you want to do it on just a separate sheet of paper, that's fine. And then if you want a computer, you can come grab one so you can do it on Canva. Any questions? All right, guys. Thank you.